guys, Shanna here. Welcome. So glad to have you here. My channel is all about finding joy while living on the autoimmune protocol. Um, so today I'm so excited. I'm going to be sharing how I started the autoimmune protocol. I know there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different approaches. In my mind, there's no right or wrong way. Um, so I'm going to share how I heard about the autoimmune protocol, um, how I started it, and what I wish I knew. So um, I was working with a naturopath. Um, I, I had never really heard of them until 2017. I had already been struggling with health challenges for over a decade. My health challenges were getting progressively worse. Could not find answers for years through my regular doctor. Um, and somebody mentioned, I, I was actually working with a professional in 2017 um, for some emotional healing, for some trauma I was working through. And um, she had mentioned that um, maybe I should see a naturopath for some of my health struggles. And so it took me a couple, if you hear that, that's my dog Roxy scratching her neck. Sorry about that. Um, so um, she told me about uh, a naturopath and that maybe I should go see one. And so towards the end of 2017, I, I, um, I looked up a naturopath in my area and I went and saw one. I started working with her and she referred me out to get some testing done. And um, one of the tests was an ultrasound of my internal of some of my internal organs, uh, including my thyroid. And so um, the ultrasound revealed that there was damage to my thyroid that, um, and she referred me to an endocrinologist. And so I went to see the endocrinologist and he diagnosed me with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the autoimmune disease based on my um, ultrasound alone. Um, I went ahead and got the blood testing done too. My, all the blood testing showed that I did have Hashimoto's. I was diagnosed. Um, within a couple days of my diagnosis, I saw my natural path again and she gave me a printout of foods that I should eat and that I shouldn't eat based on my autoimmune disease. And I think she got it from Dr. K's website um, is what is what it looked like. Um, and so I took the list and I that's how I ate. And I did some more online research. It wasn't labeled as any kind of eating. It was just, these are the foods you should eat and these are the foods that you shouldn't. And I, and I knew by this point that even though somebody was telling me to do something, I should check into it to make sure it was what felt right to me. And so I took the list and I went online and I found the autoimmune protocol. And, um, and I started eating that way that day, that day that I got the printout. And it was, um, overwhelming, as I'm sure most of us who have started the autoimmune protocol, overwhelming is probably a bit of an understatement. It was hard. It was like, what do I eat? I was very much still in the like takeout mentality and the packaged food mentality and the, you know, convenience type food. Um, and so I looked at this list and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, how do I even do this? And it's so funny because now like a year and a half later, I, it's so normal to me. It's so second nature. Like there's so many, like now my perspective is like, there are so many foods to eat. Like I'm like telling the old me, like, what are you crazy? Like, look at all these vegetables you can eat. Look at all these meats. Look at all these types of cuts of meat. Look at all these seasonings. Look at these herbs. Look at these fruits. Like what are you even complaining about? But you know, in the beginning, it's just so hard because that was my, that was my like lifestyle. That was what I was used to. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was really hard for me to start. And so at the time I was actually not on social media at all. I had been, so I was towards the end of 2017, I was getting towards my rock bottom and I was, I'd gotten off of social media because it was too hard for me. Um, I was losing my health, uh, worse than I ever had. And I could not handle watching friends and family. I, I couldn't handle their highlight reels. And so um, I had gotten off of social media. And so um, when I started the AIP, I'd been off of social media. I had no idea there was this incredible online AIP community. Um, and so I was very, I felt very, very, very much alone. I did not know anybody who ate the way I did. I did not, I, I didn't understand why my body was a certain way and why my husband could eat anything he wants and, it doesn't affect him at all. And so even, even as I started AIP and I started feeling better, which was so awesome, that's what I wanted, right? Um, it was still hard for me at first because I didn't understand like, why can everybody else eat the way that they're eating and they're fine and why am I like, I feel, I'm finally feeling better, which is what I want, but I have to eat this way and it's so hard and I can't, and I couldn't figure out how to eat out at first. And I couldn't figure out how to travel at first. Well, I was too sick to travel at first anyway, but 
you know, it just like blew my mind like, okay, I'm feeling better, but how on earth am I gonna make this into like a lifestyle? And so it was very much, as I shared in my video last week, so I kind of like did this backwards, like I should have shared how I started the AIP and then my reintroduction, my experience with the reintroduction phase, but I shared my reintroduction um, experience last week. But if you watch that, you know that, <clears throat> you know, I very much thought I was gonna be a 30 to 90 day AIP -er and that I would do my time. <laughs> And that I'd be done with it and you know thank you I'm done and that's that's not how it was it's just turned into this you know I feel so great when I eat this way and it's turned into this lifestyle for me which is amazing so when I started AIP after it you know within a couple weeks I found Dr. Sarah Ballantyne's resources I've shared how I just love her resources she's like my go-to AIP science back expert um, she just explains all the ins and outs of this is what autoimmune disease is and this is why the autoimmune protocol works and so i found her resources and that and i found i found them at a time when i was like i like had a death grip on like my determination and my grit like i think i can do this i think i can do this but i was like barely hanging on and i knew it and so i found her resources and once i understood okay like this is why my body is different this is what's going on on a cellular level this is why i feel better when i eat this way then it then it became a lot easier to me because it made sense it's like okay it's not magic it's not some like mystery whoo hashimoto's thing going on in my body like no there's this is what's going on in my body this is what's wrong with my gut this is you know this is why i feel better when i eat this way these are gut healing foods these are foods that do not trigger the immune response these are foods that let your immune system rest and so really that that was a game changer when I started to understand why eating that way worked. And so I, I do re recommend that if, if you're not really understanding what's going on in your body with your autoimmune disease, why the autoimmune protocol works, I recommend that. I wrote a blog post all about the autoimmune protocol. I will link it below and it just goes over all the basics. So I mentioned when I started the AIP, I was not on social media. And there are some good things about that and some bad things about that. <clears throat> the bad thing was I didn't know about the AIP community and that would have really, really helped me feel less alone in, in the beginning of my journey. The not so great thing, no, 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 that was the not so great thing. The great thing about me not being on social media was I had no idea there were like AIP treats and AIP comfort foods you can make and AIP snacks. And so I literally had my list of this is what I should eat and this is what I shouldn't and it was like whole foods and so I stuck to whole foods and so I really think that that's you know so I had to break through those nasty sugar cravings because I was addicted to sugar when I started the AIP and that was not fun like breaking those emotional eating habits and the sugar cravings was ugh, horrible anybody who's done it knows it's not fun you know it's not fun physically and it's not fun emotionally and it's hard to find you know new healthy coping mechanisms to replace those old bad coping mechanisms surrounding sugar and so i think if i had known about aip snacks and treats i think i i'm pretty confident that i have the type of personality i would have just like dove well it's aip like i could eat all of these like aip well desserts i want it's aip and i would have just replaced one one um you know bad habit with another um and so i i will say that i'm grateful that i didn't know that because um i had months of eating very very clean aip whole foods before i i learned about this wonderful world uh, of aip goodies too so i will say that to this day i am not a big aip snacker or and i do not eat very many aip sweets or desserts um without fail if I start eating them, I, you know, if I start eating them one day, then I'll creep to the next day, then I'll creep to the next day, and then I'm just not feeling as well. It's not like it triggers a flare, it doesn't, but I just don't feel as well as when I eat clean, whole, unprocessed, you know, AIP real food, and I stick to the basics. And so, um, speaking of sticking to the basics, um, that is very much how I started AIP. I did not know about any AIP recipes. It was too overwhelming to, I was trying to learn how to cook. I did not know how to cook cleanly when I started AIP. And so it, it was a bumpy road because I remember my naturopath telling me, you've got to get in the kitchen and you've got to like learn how to cook cleanly, you know? And I was like, deal breaker, like 
<laughs> except it wasn't a deal, except it wasn't a deal breaker because I had to get it figured out for my health and my mind. And so I did. Um, so I will say that if you are where I was, you can learn to cook cleanly. Um, just, you don't need a, you don't need a cookbook. Just like look at your AIP include list and Google things like how long do I cook chicken thighs in the oven at 350 or you know if you want to make an AIP roast like how how long do I cook a you know a chuck roast for at whatever you know uh, me and Google were BFFs for a while and that's that's just what I did I, I kept things very simple and I I'm you know I said these are my favorite AIP proteins and these are my favorite AIP veggies and these are my favorite AIP fruits and I could just kind of mix and match and create meals that way and um, so fast forward to did to today now I do have some AIP recipes I love I'm much I I like I'm really comfortable in the kitchen it's not as much as I hated it in the beginning I do not hate it I I enjoy it now it's like therapeutic for me now um, anyways that is how I started AIP in my mind there's no right or wrong way to start AIP you can do it gradually I will say that I had already cut out gluten a number of years earlier and so I did have that head start as in my mind that was a pretty pretty big head start and um, I had already cut out caffeine so most of my adult life I've been addicted to cherry coke and diet coke and I had stopped that habit a year earlier and so um, I did still have to cut everything else out, but I, I did have that jump start. And so um, what, So one way that you can start AIP is doing it more like a gradual, like six week process. And there are resources um, online that can help you with that, that can like take you through like one step at a time. I'll link one below. Um, also, Dr. Sarah Valentine, she has the AIP lecture series, which is what I took. And some people take that and they and they do their AI transition to AIP while on while taking that. Um, lecture series. Um, I was already on the AIP when I started um, taking it, but that's really the resource that I mentioned that really helped me get under like an understanding of this is what's going on in my body and this is why I, I eat that way. So I'll link that below too. But please just know that I am sending you so much love and support if you are starting the AIP, if you are thinking about starting the AIP. It's so hard. Oh, it's like one of the hardest things I've done and I've given birth without an epidural and I think that starting the AIP was harder for me, as silly as that sounds. Um, so I'm sending you so much love and support. It's, it's just that initial phase and then after that, once you get through that, honestly, it's such a beautiful way of living. I just, not that you're going to be on the elimination phase for the rest of your life. You're not. You're going to be in the reintroduction phase um, eventually, but um, just know that it is I'm free from my sugar cravings. I'm free from my emo emotional eating. I'm free from, like, I just feel great. I feel great when I eat this way and it is 100% worth it. As hard as it was in the beginning, I am so glad I got through it and I know that you can get through it too. And so I just want to know, I want you to know that I'm sending you so much love and support. You've totally got this. It's going to be hard, just you, but you can get through it. I hope you liked this video. Um, if you did, if you could like it, comment. I would love to hear your thoughts, your experience. If you have any questions, um, I did not get to sharing what I wish I knew when I started the AIP. So I will do a, a video soon about that. Um, and if you could subscribe, that'd be great too. Thank you so much, you guys, and have an awesome week.